Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. So let's get started. So we log into Microsoft Azure with our subscription account and uh, what we need to do we can go we can there is a few uh, ways we can create virtual machine. I can go to home. Uh, from home we can basically uh, click here uh, which says virtual machine or you can go to uh, you can go also here within the services and from here you can also select virtual machine uh, So I'm going to select virtual machine and then I'm going to create a new machine When you're creating you will be given many options here with my, for many with many operating system images So in for now, I'm going to select Windows Server and here you have a uh, you have a choice of uh, many operating systems, including Server 2008, Server 2012, uh, Server 2016. I'm going to select Server 2016, and then you can select uh, deployment model. Deployment model you can select uh, from Classic and uh, Resource Manager. Classic is an old deployment model, uh, but now uh, Microsoft recommends using Resource uh, Manager. Create. The very first uh, few things you need to select is uh, uh, just uh, name the virtual machine. So I'm going to name it app VM01. And then you can select SSD, uh, this type. You can select from uh, SSD and HDD. HDD is magnetic tape based uh, storage, whereas SSD is SSD, which is faster, low latency uh, disk. Uh, we all know what SSD is. Uh, then I'm going to select an administrator name. So I'm going to say WebVM admin. And then you can select password. I'm going to select a uh, convenient password. After selecting password, you can select uh, which uh, you can select your subscription type, and then you can select resource uh, group. I'm going to create a new resource group here, uh, web web services. I already have another resource group, so I'm going to say web services zero one, and uh, location I'm going to select from. So if there are different regions you can select. I can select Central US, Central Canada. I'm going to select Canada Central. Uh, if you have a Windows license, you can use. You can say yes, and then you can use that license. If not, then later on you need to buy a license. For in our case, we're going to use an evaluation copy, so we don't need a license. Next is to select the hardware. Uh, basically, hardware. I'm just saying it is uh, just uh, different classes of uh, uh, hardware, different classes of VMs provided uh, from Microsoft. So, so these these are based on uh, different type of VM. There are general purpose. There is uh, compute optimized. There is memory optimized. Then there is a database optimized. So for now, I'm going to select general purpose machine. I'm just selecting based on the cheapest uh, one available. So this is $14.47. Next is you can select a high availability group. Availability zones uh, will be provided. If you don't select, uh, here saying no availability zones are available for the location. So uh, since I selected Canada Central region, there are no separate availability zones uh, available, so you can, you won't be able to select availability zone. Uh, later on, we can create our own availability zone so that we can select from that. Uh, availability sets are used for uh, scaling out, scaling in, or scaling out to virtual machines. For now, we're not going to select them. Later on, in another video, we're going to select. So for now. Uh, storage will be managed storage so we'll leave it as is and here uh, we don't need to make any changes uh, public IP ports the ports that you need to open I need to open RDP port so that I can remote into uh, this machine from my home computer you can select extension extension basically refers to different uh, uh, agents or uh, different uh, software for example if you want antivirus software installed with this VM the Microsoft does provide many different uh, type of uh, 
uh, software that can be attached with the uh, with this uh, virtual machine. So for now, I don't I don't need any extensions at the moment. You can set a auto shutdown time. You, for example, you can set a time 7 p.m. at certain date. It should uh, every day it should set shut down and so on. So for now, we don't need to select it. Boot diagnostic is automatically enabled here. Uh, which is boot diagnostic monitoring so if there are any booting issues you will be informed uh, guest OS diagnostic so which means that uh, it is it says disabled but there is some basic monitoring available for CPU and disk usage uh, but if you need advanced okay. monitoring you can enable this option uh, storage account is this created for us and then uh, there is a managed service identity which is registered with Active Directory we don't need it to be registered with Active Directory at the moment and then backup we don't need any backups at the moment so I'm going to close this and close this so most of the things on this uh, on this page are default other than I just enabled RDP port and then I'm going to select OK so then you let me know what are the charges for this what will be the charges for this machine and I can agree to the terms and conditions and create so it will take uh, 10 to 15 minutes for this machine to be ready. I'm going to pause this video here and then I'm going to come back once the video is ready. So while this video is being made, uh, sorry, while this uh, VM is being created, I can show you that how much resources are already been created with this VM. Uh, so first of all it created it is creating this VM it has already created a virtual network for us the name of the virtual network is vnet we web services vnet and storage account is automatically created with us with this storage account all of the disk and all type of disk will be uh, will be under this storage account uh, under one storage account with this one subscription uh, you can get 500 terabytes of storage uh, for use uh, and this is all free trial this is all located in Canada Central the resource group is uh, web, uh, web services 01 uh, we do have network interface uh, card which is this public IP uh, public IP it will be uh, will be automatically assigned to us a security network security group is already assigned so this is to show you that how many things are created by default for us in the background when creating our first VM uh, let me go back to our dashboard and see how is it going so machine is still being created once the machine is created we will be able to see you can also see in the notification area uh, that machine is being deployed this is the history that how uh, I was creating VMs deleting VM deployment and and all it, it gives us a notification different type of notification for now our deployment is in progress I can go here so once this uh, VM is ready you will be able to see other properties based on this VM so we'll wait and I'm going to resume the video once it is done. Okay, so um, it took around uh, uh, 10 minutes and the deployment is successful. So I can go to the resource now. So once I'm at the resource, it's showing me the resource code that I have, the web VM name. Uh, public IP address and there is some basic monitoring here that you can see um, it is part of we are in Canada central location free trial subscription ID and so on here I can see the disks that are attached so for now there is only one disk attached to this VM which is the OS disk uh, this is the hardware that is it, that we used uh, so we can change the hardware from here uh, provided provided uh, the underlying hardware what underlying hardware is uh, uh, this VM currently attached to so sometimes if the underlying hardware is uh, more faster or more newer as compared to the VM that you selected it might, it might be sitting in on another hardware then you uh, uh, then you'll have to uh, you can make changes but you need to shut down the VM and then you and, and then you can select another hardware for now I'm gonna leave this hardware as is I'm gonna jump back to the VM again and here we can connect to the VM I can start it is already started we can restart stop delete the VM we can refresh the VM so here so there are some other um, uh, other options
options as well that we can select to. Uh, we do have extensions here. Remember extension that we can install antivirus uh, software. For now, there are no additional uh, extensions going, uh, additional software going on to this VM. We can add. So I'm going to go back to overview. I'm going to connect to this VM. So if you need to connect, you can use the public IP address 3389 port is open based on our security or networking uh, uh, settings. So I'm going to download this. Now this is our RDP link and here it shows comes like this and then it will ask for username and password. So let me use a username and password. So if your user and password is correct, we'll take you to another screen and you can say yes and you will be able to connect to your VM. So here is the VM, it is starting up and in few moments you will be able to log into server 2016. So this is how you can create and connect to a VM uh, and uh, if you have any questions let me know. Uh, once you are logged in, it's up to you. You can just disconnect from this VM. Uh, remember to delete all your resources at the end of your lab. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I will see you in another video.